Hi folks. Hi guys. Seth, per Seth Perkins. Scott Perkins. Uh, Seth's got a deer here he harvested, so we're gonna get started, show you guys how to cut it up. Go for it. First of all, tagging, extremely, extremely important. Make sure you take your tag with you everywhere you go. Make sure it stays with the carcass and the meat throughout the processing, um, with the hide, with the mount, whatever you're doing. Um, make sure you keep your tag with your deer at all times. So we're gonna go ahead, and just get started breaking this deer down. I'll show you how I would do it. Normally, I would use our bandsaw if I was doing it here in the plant, but since most of you guys don't have a bandsaw in your garage, Today we're going to do it without the use of the saw. I might use a hand saw once in a while, but you'll get the idea. Feel free to uh, comment if you want any questions answered. So the first thing I do is reach inside the carcass and pull out these fish tenders. And these pull out real easy. Once you get them started, they they come they really just they come right out. And as you can see, this deer is extremely clean. So when you're field dressing your deer, be real careful that you don't fill the insides with feces or stomach matter or things like that. Shot placement's very important. I know sometimes we can't help it. Um, and you know, we get a gut shot deer or something like that. Just make sure in that case that you get it cleaned out real well um, after you field dress it. That, that plays a very important role in how your food's gonna taste on how clean your carcass is. So let's go ahead and get these fish tenders pulled out. Now so that's referring to these as fish tenders. Some might call them tenderloins. Um, basically, these are what you would have as a tenderloin on a beef, not the same thing as a backstrap. He'll get to that in a few moments. So there's a ball socket right here. Go ahead and break it at that ball socket on both sides. Applying just a little bit of pressure to get it pop off of there. So there's your hind quarters. We're gonna go ahead and zip the shoulders off. This is just purely held on by muscle so that there's really no saw cutting needed with those. Pull your flank meat off. Make a cut right down along the back. Make a cut along the top. This is the portion where he's actually gonna <clears throat> extract what most of you are gonna to refer to as the back strap. This peels out real easy once you make these simple cuts. You can just take it all the way up into the shoulder, or up into the neck here. We'll clean these up a little bit more once we get uh, the rest of the deer broke down. And for most people, this is a lot more intimidating at home than it really should be. Breaking a deer down really, it's all about knowing where to make your cuts, what bones to follow, and everything pretty much just pulls out by a, by a, a seam. We'll go ahead and pull the back strap out on this side too.
pull a little bit of this rib meat off as we go here. Having a sharp knife is extremely important. Whenever you're doing something like this, definitely want to make sure you have a sharp knife. You guys can do this type of processing at deer camp. That way you don't have to bring the whole carcass home. Um, you, could, you could literally have it done within 15 or 20 minutes at deer camp. A little bit of neck meat there. Take the rib meat off. You can see the shot. Most people don't understand that when you make a shot on a deer, how much damage it actually does. So this deer was double lunged, rage broadhead, and it's very minimal damage, but there is some. You hit the deer in the shoulder with a shotgun, it's gonna, it's gonna mess things up. So when you go to your local meat processor and wonder where all your meat is, that's where some of it ended up. We'll spend a little bit more time on this, picking a little bit more of the meat off of here. But for now, we'll show you how to break down the cuts that we have already taken off the carcass. This is our trimmings pile. So we'll go through this here um, after a while. I don't know if we'll do it on the video or not, just because it takes a little bit more time. So trimmings will be in this pile. We have our hindquarters, we have our shoulders, and our back straps. There's a silver skin on the back of the back strap. It's real important to get that off when, before you cut it into steaks. If you don't take this off, um, it can be a little unpleasant to eat. So what I do is just strip it off the back of the back strap like you're flaying a fish. So that at that point, you go ahead and just cut these up into uh, real nice chops. Same thing on this side. And when you're cutting, a lot of this, these cuts that you make, if you just make simple cuts, a lot of it, you can just pull apart by hand. Here again, silver skin, zip that off, beautiful piece of deer meat right there. We'll go ahead and break the hindquarters down now, show you the different muscle structures. There's a knuckle right here. Let's give that a pop. That shank comes right out. Follow this bone structure here. Pull this main femur bone out. This is where your jerky and stew and roast and things like that come out of. Your real nice, real nice cuts. Continue breaking this down. This would be a sirloin tip or a round tip on a beef. Makes an excellent deer roast. You can cut it into stew, whatever you'd like. Breaking the rest of the round apart.
There's three muscle structures inside the remaining portion of this round. We have a top round, eye of round, and a bottom round. These are what makes the best jerky. Top round being the best. It's important when you're cutting deer, um, this doesn't have a lot of fat on it, but you don't want to leave a lot of fat in your venison. That's what's going to give it more of a wild kind of a gamey taste, so it's important to get the fat out of there. And here again, when field dressing an animal, you know, I realize that you're under many different circumstances. It's not always easy keeping things clean. If a deer is going to get dirty while field dressing, this is an area where it would get dirty. So just remember, take your knife and just peel that area off and just discard it. So Zach Benoit just asked, do we process deer? Um, Zach, we do not process deer. Uh, this is strictly for home educational purposes. We hunt, we love to hunt, it's what we do. So we thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys how to do this at home. A lot of people have asked, so we figured it would be uh, pretty cool to do a video and just show everybody. Here again, we're pulling that femur out. We have our round tip, our sirloin tip, another wonderful roast, or jerky, stew meat, anything like that. So you guys, and I know you're making all that money to spend tomorrow, I am gonna be in a tree tomorrow on a river bottom. Mm -hmm. Open to collect on this thing I've seen twice now already. So, Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, I just told your mom, I said, oh my God, you're going to start cutting deer? She goes, no. Hope you kill a big I one. I like the state supply. <laughs> I'm taking down states this week. I said, you know, before my son was content with the hamburgers. Now he says, hey, we got a white brother, grab some steaks for it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And this deer out of the state <laughs> That's right. Good see you, this guy. Yep. Good luck. Explain to him what just happened. Oh, well, one of our customers <laughs> popped in to say hey and tell us he's going out hunting a big one this weekend. Pick up some steaks for the store from the store to take along with him. So that's all part of it. You know, this experience is really an enrichment experience, or it can be for yourself or your your family or your buddies, whoever you go. You go into deer camp. Um, you're hanging out, you're having a good time. It's not always just about harvesting um, an animal. It's about spending some time outdoors, spending time with family, friends, what have you, enjoying God's creation. And, and the, 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 uh, the, if you do happen to harvest wild game, that's, that's an added blessing. At least that's how we look at it a lot of times. Absolutely. So continuing on here. I just broke these shoulders apart. The, on the shoulder, there isn't a lot that can be done with it other than ground venison, um, stew meat, roast, you know, that sort of thing. If you want, there's a top blade steak right here that can be pulled off, which is the same thing as a flat iron on a beef. They're not big, but they are delicious. Um, takes a little bit to get the meat out of there and separate the, the tendon out of the middle of this, but that's, that's a deer flat iron. So if you want to go to the efforts of peeling that out, you can. The shanks, we'll uh, continue to trim those out, make some ground venison out of those. I'm going to finish up here with some, just some cutting. Fish tenders. Um, you know, we've, we've seen or heard this in the past. Perhaps, um, you know, I would say majority of everybody is aware that these exist, but they, they, uh, 
the tenderloin or the fish tender really is the best piece of meat on your entire deer carcass and you can do um, well you can you can completely miss it uh, people have they've they've not realized that it's it's in the carcass and they've thrown it away or you uh, you are field dressing your deer and you you hack them all to bits so those really are your best most choice pieces of meat that's the, the same as the filet mignon on a beef so you, you really want to make sure that you get a hold of these. I'm sure most of you know that, but uh, just a, a reminder, don't hack them up when you're field dressing and certainly don't forget about them throwing away with the carcass. I want to show you how we cut deer jerky. That's always one of the, a, a question that a lot of people ask is how you cut your jerky. So this is a venison top round. It's always a little little blood vein that runs through there. Pull that out, it'll make some unpleasant jerky. As you can see, the grains in this top round are running this way. So you wanna cut it against the grain, and we usually cut it about an inch and a quarter to an inch, you know, inch, inch to an inch and a quarter thick. Cut it against the grain, like that, and then take each of these pieces, lay them down, and go this way. So you wind up with real nice uniform strips of jerky where the grains actually go across the strip. So it makes for a very pleasant eating experience. You're not gnawing on a, on a strip of jerky that you, that you can't chew. So um, this will get made into uh, venison jerky. We're gonna season it with Bearded Butcher Blend seasoning. You can use a, a one bottle of our seasoning on venison jerky, and that'll get you anywhere from 11 to 13 pounds of meat you can season with. Um, the Beard Butcher Blend seasoning can really be used on the entire deer. We're gonna be sampling some uh, venison brats tomorrow at the Finn that we use the Beard Butcher Blend seasoning in. We're gonna be sampling, some of this deer is gonna be getting sampled at the Finn. Um, if you guys want, try some back straps in one of our four different flavors. We're going to be sampling them right there. Um, so simple deer back strap, you know, you can cut them however you would like. Some, some guys will roll this up, they'll tie it, they'll make a roast. What I like to do, I like to, to cut them an inch and a half or so thick. So that way you, you wind up with a real nice thick, deer chop. You can butterfly them. Some guys will do that. Um, you could even take this, you could you could slice it long ways, open it up, fill it with, with whatever your favorite ingredients are, and then tie it. So those are deer chops. As you can see there's, there's no gristle or anything like that on them. Anybody can do this at home. It's, it's really not difficult. I'm sure it's intimidating for somebody who doesn't know how. The, the most important thing, um, in my opinion, when you're gonna be processing a deer, is to have a clean surface, a sharp knife. Outdoor Edge makes a really good knife. You can buy these at the Finn. Um, pick yourself up a really good knife, keep it sharp, Learn the different muscle structures of the deer. Once you learn the different muscle structures, it's gonna be so much easier for you to seam, seam the venison out. So, just an overall of what we did. This is what's left. So this is the deer carcass right here. We will continue to pick on that and we'll get some more meat off of it because certainly we wouldn't throw this away um, without taking that edible meat off of there. We have our fish tenders. Last night we cooked these on the big green egg. Um, we took them out of my son's deer that he got this past weekend and they are phenomenal. We used the Chipotle Beard Butch Blend seasoning and it was better than any steakhouse. So venison fish tenders, strips for jerky, 
These are deer chops cut from the back strap. Eye of round, round tip, sirloin tip, make awesome roasts. You throw these in a crock pot, favorite veggies, throw some uh, whatever flavor of beer butcher blend seasoning in there you want. Amazing dinner. Bottom round, you cut those in a jerky. Top round, more jerky. These are shoulders. So you could, uh, this has a bone in it right now. You could use this as a roast, crock pot roast. You can pull your flat irons out if you want. If you don't want either of those, simply trim this out into your ground meats. Um, these bones, we'll continue to clean these bones up and uh, make sure we get all the meat off of them. We don't want anything on this deer to go to waste. You know, this, this deer lived its life and we harvested it. Um, I was actually blessed to harvest it uh, two nights ago. And um, we took, I took this deer's life so that it could give us life and that we could continue to uh, live. So re we respect these animals a lot. We don't just kill for the thrill of it. Um, there's so much more to hunting than just killing. So we'll continue to go through these pieces, trim them out. We'll make some ground venison. We'll make some smokies. We'll make some bologna. Um, and that's pretty much how you break down a deer. So everybody have a great season. Stay safe. Wear your harness. Please wear your harness if you're in a tree stand. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with Thin Feather and Fur. Have a great day.